Recently, I have noticed a flux in Flat Earther videos where they bring up various kind of black swan images. Quick recap. Old Europeans had only seen white swans and believed all swans are white until someone showed them a black swan. We Globers are apparently like those Europeans and these pictures are supposed to be black swan to convince us otherwise. Obviously, any phenomenon would qualify. But for some reason, most of the images or videos I come across are focusing on objects seen that should be beyond the curve. There was the old oil rig photo. Some assumes it's called black swan because the oil rig looks like one. At that distance, part of it should not be visible. Obviously, there was a huge amount of atmospheric distortion making the crane look wavy. But at the end of the day, you have to give flat earthers credit. They don't know when to give up. The new lot is on high definition and looks nice. I love that floating look, which surprisingly they never mention. Now, for most of the images, our explanation is simply refraction and it brings things into view even beyond the curve. Pretty extraordinary claim. So here is my proposition. Let's approach it in a different way with some simple calculation. Hopefully I will not screw it up. Obviously, there should be no dispute regarding refraction. Due to refraction, light bends when moving from one transparent medium to another. In my proposition, I will ignore other variables and just focus on basic refraction from space into our atmosphere. The sun being massive and being so far means all the rays reaching the earth are almost parallel. In the image, you can see the sun on top and we have the dark side of the earth. Please understand that the image is not to scale. For the values we are about to talk, I can't make it visible on current resolution. The image is exaggerated just for clarity. As the rays are coming down, it is hitting the atmosphere and we contend that it bends the light. So can we calculate how far in we can be in the dark side and still see the light? This is my test proposal. Let's focus on a single beam of light. This solitary ray is hitting the atmosphere, refracting and then reaching our eye. We know from Snell's law that there is no refraction when the light is at 0 degree or at 90 degree to the normal line. Obviously here we are approaching the high end. Let's use a value of 89.9997 degree. That's almost 89 degree, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. That is our incident angle. Vacuum's refraction index or incident index is 1. Air's refraction index or refracted index is 1.0003. So our refraction angle would be inverse sine of sine value of incident angle divided by refraction index. That gives us refraction angle of 88.5967212 in degrees. On our right angle triangle, we can figure out what the other angle is and it is 1.4032788 degree. Finally, with our circumference at the equator being 40,075 kilometers, gives us the distance of 156.212 km. So, without taking any additional variables into consideration, refraction alone would mean areas up to 156.212 km inside the dark side would get that ray of light. This whole example is really when the sun hasn't gone below the horizon. If we allow it to set, the furthest deep it can have, while the farthest area in dark zone can still see, 
would be half that angle or about 0.7 degree. From other end, it takes Earth 24 hours to rotate 360 degree. And from that, we can say it would take 2 minutes 48 seconds to cover our calculated degree. Translates to, we should be able to see sunrise or sunset full 2 minutes 48 seconds before or after the actual event. I'm hoping the math will check out. Also note that we went very close to 90 degree, but could have gone much closer. I mentioned a couple of times that there are variables we are not considering. Calculating atmospheric refraction is quite complicated with several different methods. All those formulas also take air pressure and temperature into account. Before you call hogwash, we see examples of this every day. The sky normally appears blue because of all the tiny molecules of gas in the air that causes scattering depending on the wavelength of the light. This effect is called Rayleigh scattering. Shorter wavelengths are scattered more, which happens to be blue and violet. Our eyes are more sensitive to blue and there weren't enough violets in sunlight to begin with, giving the sky the blue appearance. As the light from the horizon has to travel more through the air, it is scattered and rescattered, resulting in almost no blue light, so we see an increased amount of white light. That's why sky fades to pale as it reaches horizon. During sunrise and sunset, the light is passing through more atmosphere. The shorter wavelengths are getting scattered farther as the light is passing over great distance, leaving us with the longer wavelength yellow and red light. Also, different parts of the sun rays have to go through different distance in Earth's atmosphere, and that causes the uneven shape we observe. Obviously, my simple example is just to illustrate how we can see the light due to refraction even when we shouldn't. And I showed it based on sunset just to make the illustration easier to follow. But I'm sure the fade in horizon during daytime tells you that refraction is happening all the time and not only when the sun is at the horizon. Hey, how come flat earthers never ask why we get to see the horizon during noon when the light is coming from above us? I think I just gave them an idea. Back to sunset. Imagine obstructing part of that light. Wouldn't that create a silhouette even if the object itself is not visible? Or the normal light from horizon having the same effect? Makes you think. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed this content and maybe even taken in something new. In which case, can I please ask you to like, comment and maybe subscribe to help my little channel grow? Have a safe day. Signing off.